Hey, and we're back. It's Venomisto kicking off the vocal extraction video tutorial series using Audionamics ADX Tracks Pro 3 SP. So this is a great piece of software from Audionamics that lets you do audio source separation, vocal extraction, instrumental separation, all kinds of stuff. So what we're going to be doing is going from start to finish workflow, looking at the different screens and how everything flows together so that you can get into your own vocal extractions. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that you can see on this introductory screen is the option to start a new project, open a project, or open a recent project. So if we start a new project, and then what we can do is drag in an audio source file. So for this tutorial series, we're going to be using a track called Duffy's Cut by the band Cooper and Keneally. They're a great folk rock blues band, so they're doing some really cool stuff. We'll be using that track. Now we can see some automatic extraction options. If we're doing something musical, melodic, we choose this option. If we're doing more post-production work with dialogue and speech, we can choose that. Uh, and if you want to find out more about this, Audionamics has a video of their own where they go into detail on these automatic extraction options. So for now, we're going to use melodic vocals only, and then I'm going to cut over to one where I've already done this separation. All right, so here I have the already processed file. So what this will do when you first kick it off is send the file up to Audionamics' backend, and in the cloud, it does some processing. It will separate it into a vocal and a music, and then it will send this back to you. So before we get into understanding more about how the program's put together, I want to start with a very important concept, which is to begin with the end in mind. And what I mean by this is that you want to understand what the use case and what's the end result that you're going for. Are you doing this for a dance remix? And in that case, maybe you don't have to be so precise with some of the spectral edits, which we'll look at later. If you're doing it for a forensic type project where you really need this to be super crystal clear, we're going to take different tactics as we go through. So before you even start your first extraction, always remember, begin with the end in mind. So that being said, let's start to understand how the program fits together. So one important concept, as I mentioned earlier, is that there's vocal and there's music. We're always able to listen to one or the other or them both sum together. Now, the other important thing is that this is non-destructive editing. So if I take something out of the vocal track, it goes into the music track and vice versa. Were I to take something out of the music track, it's going to go into the vocal track. So this is an important concept to remember that it's non-destructive. You're never going to lose any musical content. So what we can see here is the first view, which is the separate view. And this shows you the pitchogram, which is how the <clears throat> pitch is lined up across the sonic spectrum. Up here we have the vocal track, the music track, and the actual waveform of the full track itself. Down here we have our transport controls, some edit controls, master volume. We can use a guide tone if we want. And then of course the actual notes, and this can be helpful as we try and refine this pitch guide, which we'll look at in a moment. Can also change the brightness of the backing. Can go ahead with the contrast. And of course, if we wanted to change the color of it, we have that option too. I usually keep it on the blue. Over on this side, we'll see the separations that we run. We'll have automatic and refined. And then as we start to process uh, our separations using the process and spectral screen, we'll see a list of these here. One thing to keep in mind is you don't want a ton of those really, so typically I'll do some processing and then clean it up as we go. So let's take a listen to what we have so far. From scattered bones, the old tree grows. Scattered bones, all that remain. All right, let's take a listen to what the automated separation got us. From scattered bones, the old tree grows. Scattered bones, all that remain. It's pretty good. You can see some of the guitar getting through. Let's listen to the music track. Really just a little sibilance on some of the S's is coming through from the vocals, but otherwise we have a pretty clean instrumental to start with. All right, so let's quickly take a look at what the workflow is. You've got the separate screen where we can refine this pitch guide and understand how the separation is going to be processed. On the process screen, this gives us some more tools like spatial processing, drum reduction, and the like. And then finally, on the spectral tab, we have the spectral editor. So here is really where we can do some very powerful editing. This maps it out into a left and right channel. We have a pan-specific view. We have some very powerful tools, which we have some pro tip videos on as well if we want to go deeper there. 
So typically you're going to move left to right. You start on the separate screen, you do some pitch guide refinement, you go over to the process screen. If you need to, you could go over to the spectral editor. If you have multiple processes, uh, multiple separations here, you can comp them together and then you would export your final result. Of course, bringing it into your DAW and you can do some more processing there, which we'll look at in a future pro tip video. All right, so that's a quick overview of the lay of the land for Audionamics ADX Trax Pro 3 SP. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can refine that pitch guide and get a little bit more improved separation before we move on to some of the more advanced processing tools.